So it was a 2-1 victory for Celtic on return to club football, but it seems like a lot of people are frustrated by the performance for Celtic. So I'm going to give my two cents on that just after these. This video and all the videos across the YouTube channel are brought to you in association with the One Football app. The One Football app is your one-stop shop for all your football goodness. You can get your results, your scores, your lineups, your transfer news, your stats, anything that you want on any team in any league is available in the One Football app now. And in addition to all their great features, you can even stream one live Saturday game each week from the Serie A and you can get all your highlights from the Serie A in the One Football app. If you want to get that and you want to get the rest of the great features with the One Football app and support the channel as well, then download the One Football app now using the link in the description below. So a 2-1 victory for Celtic in the end against Motherwell Kyogo and Hatate getting the goals. I was almost right in my prediction of 3-1 with Hatate and Kyogo both scoring. Jota was the only player in my prediction that didn't live up to the estimations. I thought he had a good game, but he just didn't get himself on the score sheet. A lot of people annoyed by this performance. It seems the fallout on Twitter was pretty vitriolic against Celtic. People, Some people are happy to get the three points, but disappointed by the performance. A lot of frustrations during the game that Celtic weren't playing to the usual high standards that they were uh, previous to the international break, obviously, St. Mirren result aside. But it didn't seem like vintage Celtic under Ange Postacoglu. But ultimately, they got the win. Now, I actually had a different opinion. I thought, yes, it looked a little lethargic. It looked a little slow at times. They weren't penetrating as much as you'd want them to. They weren't pressing as much as you want them to. But this was a, an incredibly dominant performance from Celtic. Whether you came away from the result thinking they could have played better, that's probably fair enough. But Celtic completely dominated this game. They won 2-1. Fair enough. If you look at the XG, Celtic at 3.39 XG according to FOTMOB. That was against 0.29 for Motherwell. Motherwell really did not create much in this game at all. Celtic are averaging an XG of about 2.6 this season so far. So they actually bettered that in this game against Motherwell. And they created some good chances. Celtic had 17 shots in this game. And 12 of them shots came from inside the box. So Celtic were creating good chances. They were dominant in possession. They dominated in terms of the big chances of the game. And there was a few mistakes along the way. So it came away almost like a disappointing return to club football. It was it was so long away for the international break that we almost were expecting Celtic to come straight out of the gates and win 6-0. And maybe it just didn't live up to the estimations that some people had or some expectations that people had coming into this game. But Celtic did concede another goal, and that is somewhere that you should be worried about in terms of that defensive line. Without Cameron Carter-Vickers, Celtic are a completely different team defensively. Jans and Welsh came in. That partnership still needs to grow a little bit. I think Starfelt would be a better partner for Jans at the minute. But without Carter-Vickers, that is now four goals out of the total of six goals that Celtic have conceded have come when Cameron Carter-Vickers has not been playing. So he is the rock in that team. He's the communicator. And I think you saw that in the game against Motherwell. There were a few mistakes in the defensive line, especially for the goal. And that's where you need to sure up in terms of these games. That's, I think, if Celtic win this two, this game 2-0, I don't think many people are complaining. I think it's just the fact that Celtic only won it 2-1. And it was a little bit worrying at the end whether Celtic were going to get over the line or not. But it's a Motherwell goal that I actually want to concentrate on here because it's often said that three mistakes in a row can lead to a goal. And that's pretty much exactly what happened here for Celtic. It was three mistakes in a row from three different people, followed by several mistakes from Juranovic in terms of the touch, his body shape, and communication with Hart that led to the Motherwell goal. So let's start off with the first mistake for this Motherwell goal. The ball comes in, it's Maeda at the front post, he's in the hole just between the six yard box and the post. He does well to get his head on it, but as you can see, he heads it straight out to the edge of the box, into the danger zone. What he needs to be doing there is heading it straight back out to where the ball came from, out towards the sideline, out away from the danger, make it difficult for them to get the second ball in. He heads it out towards the danger area, straight to the edge of the box. Now, here comes mistake number two. The ball actually falls to Jota at the edge of the box. 
Jota glances at the Motherwell defender just before the ball comes to him. So he knows he's there. I think that's in his mind. I think that's why he doesn't take a touch. He does look like he has time to take a touch here. But I think that's in his mind here. He spotted the Motherwell defender and he needs to get this ball away. Because of that, he clears his ball straight back up into the air. Still in the danger zone. Still not, not dealt with. Still in play and still giving Motherwell an opportunity to get on the third ball, which they do. And this comes uh, to mistake number three, which is Juranovic. Now, you can't really see Juranovic in the frame initially, but when he comes into the frame, you can see that his body shape is actually wrong here to deal with this ball. He should be facing out the way with his body shape, facing out the way, not facing towards his own goal. Because of that, he can't actually see that the man that he's marking has not followed the ball in into the box he has not gone for the cross and because of that Juranovic goes for the ball if he has his body shape back then I think Joe Hart comes out claims that ball easy enough and it's dealt with easy peasy lemon squeezy but it's not the problem is Juranovic's body shape is wrong so he has to go in and deal with that ball now there's three mistakes again here from Juranovic the first comes from the fact that his body shape is wrong he has to go in and claim that ball now. The second one is that he doesn't talk to Joe Hart. You can see Joe Hart coming out. Juranovic still goes for it. And then, once again, because of his body shape, the way that Juranovic has to take that touch, that makes it more difficult to take it away from the goal because he's still facing his own goal. He's still taking it towards the goal rather than taking it away from the goal. And that's three mistakes from Juranovic in a row but prior to that, there were three mistakes from the Celtic team in general in dealing that with that ball. And those are the things that I think you just don't get with Cameron Carter-Vickers. I think he's leading the line a little bit better. He's communicating with Joe Hart to where he wants to be. And that hole between uh, the centre-backs and Juranovic in the first place probably isn't there if it's Cameron Carter-Vickers playing as the right centre-back. So really, the conclusion for this game for me is that Celtic have returned from club football with a lot of knocks to key players and they've managed to get three points on the board ahead of a crucial Champions League fixture against RB Leipzig on Wednesday night. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing this performance. I'm not saying it was a particularly good performance. I'm just saying it may not have been as bad as it might have felt. I was watching that game. I was as frustrated as anybody watching it. That's just the manner of these games. It's the way the teams have set up. It's the way that St. Mirren set up and got success. Motherwell set up very similar to that to try frustrate the Celtic players bring the game in narrow and bunker in, essentially hoping to get something on the break. That's the way the teams are going to play against Celtic. But consider the fixture list that Celtic have now over the next couple of months until this World Cup break. This is all you need. You need to get these wins. You need to get the three points. The performances is what Ange cares about. That's what he always says. The performances come first before results. I think he's going to be happy to get the results along the way over these next couple of weeks. He said it about last year, about Christmas. It was just all about getting the job done, getting over the lines. The player players were working off fumes. I think that's what we're seeing. Celtic are dealing with something that they haven't dealt with in multiple years now, and that is having to deal with playing Champions League on a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night and then having to play Scottish opposition on the weekend. It's very, very difficult in terms of tactical uh, and in terms of the amount of effort that you're putting in. I do think that's in the players' minds in these games going into these Champions League games that they're going to have to come up against a much fitter, much stronger and much more dangerous outfit on a Wednesday night. And maybe that's in their heads going into the weekend. And maybe that's why we're seeing these slightly sluggish, slightly slower, not as helter-skelter games from Celtic this season. I don't think it's a worrying aspect. If Celtic had an XG of 1 over the course of the last couple of games, yes, that's when you start to worry. But the underlying metrics are there. Celtic are still dominating these games. Celtic are still the top team in Scotland. They still have the best team. They still have the best defence. They still have the best attack. And the performances are going to lead to results across the season. I don't think it's at any time to be worried. The more injuries we pick up, that's when you start to get worried. Hopefully Cameron Carter-Vickers and Starfield to get back fit and get that partnership going again. Hopefully the likes of Haksabanovic can get up to full fitness. Jack Amakis can get back fully fit. It's important when these players are taking knocks or are out for a week or out for a couple of weeks that the players who are on the pitch 
continued on in the same form. And that's what Celtic have done at the weekend. It's a good win, in my opinion. Not the most amazing performance you're, you're going to get. But in terms of the reaction that I saw on Twitter, I don't think it was as bad as that at all. So look, that's my thoughts on the match at the weekend. The 2-1 win against Motherwell. What do you think? Do you think I'm being too soft on the team? Do you think that they need to up their game a little bit? Let me know in the comments below. And please, if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel as well. We'll chat to you later, folks. Good luck.